Hey there, did you just get your school supply list and look down for emergency supplies and realize that it had either been completely missed or the uh, totality of emergency supplies, supplies was a Ziploc bag, a juice box, and a bag of fish crackers? Well, for most of us that are thinking about emergencies, that is not gonna cut it. So stay tuned and I'm gonna show you the kit that I made for my kids that they take with them to school, that they take with them to friends' houses, and can be kind of a baseline for you to build your own kit or modify it for your own kids. So stay tuned and check out the video next. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cascadia Dispatch. I'm Casey, and today we are gonna talk about a topic that I am really, really excited about. I get asked about this quite frequently, and the topic is emergency kits for kids. Specifically, as we start to head into the fall, emergency kits for kids to take to school. Uh, we're gonna talk about why, uh, or I'm gonna talk about why I put one together, and then also what I put in mine, why I put what I put in it for the kids, um, how you might wanna modify and change it, customize it, um, and kind of what you might wanna think about as you are putting something like this together. So uh, stay tuned, and we are going to jump into it right now. So why did I make an emergency kit for my kids and why might you wanna make an emergency kit for your kids? Well, there are several reasons. I'm gonna talk on the, the three that kind of stood out to me. So first is um, when we started going to our school, we go to a charter school, we go to a commuter school, it's not close by our house. Um, when we started going there and talked to the, the principal at the time, there was no real emergency plan um, in place at all. There was some rough plans, but there were no supplies. There were no water bottles for the kids. There was no food plan. There was, there was nothing really. Um, and so I spent some time with the principal trying to get some of those plans in place so the school as a whole would start to have plans. What I recognize from that is, is that worst case scenario, I wanted to, my child to at least have something. So I wanted to make a kit that they could have so if they were waiting for us to get there, they would at least have something. They would have something to eat. Um, they would maybe have something to keep warm, um, but they would have some basic supplies until we got there. The second reason that I made a kit was a lot of schools in our area and a lot of schools other places um, will send home a list of emergency supplies along with their school supply list. So you get your pencils and you get your notebooks and all of that. And then there's also a list of things usually that, that they want in a gallon Ziploc bag that will stay at the school. And usually that'll stay in a bucket in the classroom or it's supposed to stay in your child's backpack. Our school didn't have a list like that. Um, our school still doesn't have a list like that. So what I wanted to do was to put together a kit based on some of the lists that I had seen, some of the things that I think are specific to being at a commuter school that maybe a neighborhood school wouldn't necessarily need to consider um, so that we would have something, even though there wasn't a, a specific list, that the kids would have something specifically for them. The third reason that I made these kits is because they don't just go to school. Uh, it started out that that was really where they would go when, when my wife and I weren't with them. And so making a kit kind of tried to uh, expand the blanket of safety that we were trying to uh, put together with our supplies at home and supplies in cars and things like that. And so the kit allowed that to kind of extend to where they were at school. What I realized was they go lots of other places. They go to friends' houses, they go to classes. And so having an emergency kit that's only for school doesn't necessarily help them in any of those other places. And if I'm gonna put a kit together, I would rather make it a kit that they can use multiple places than have it be something that's specific for school and then I've gotta make another kit and another kit and another kit. So this kit is really designed to kind of go in their backpack when they go to school. It's designed to go in a backpack if they go to a friend's house. It's designed to go in a, a backpack when they go to a class or a lesson or something like that. Um, but kind of wherever they go, this is a kit that can travel with them as well. So they have a base level of supplies, just like when we go anywhere, when we are in the car, when we've got, I've got one of my bags with me, we always have some level of supplies with us. And so this makes sure that when we're not with them, they at least have something. All right, so let's talk about the kit. Uh, so the first thing is the pouch. A lot of people will, uh, a lot of schools say use a Ziploc bag. That's totally fine. Um, I wanted something that was a little bit more durable, something that could go from, from backpack to backpack, um, something that would add, leave some room for adding more things. 
um, have a little bit of structure and organization to it. So I chose uh, a Maxpedition pouch. Maxpedition makes awesome pouches. Um, I have several different versions of this pouch. Um, I usually use their EDC pouch for my own things. Um, and that goes in my laptop bag and, and goes between other areas. Um, this is the beefy pouch. Um, they have great names. This is the beefy pouch. Uh, there is also a fatty pouch organizer, which is slightly smaller. It's in between the EDC and this one. Um, I initially thought that's the one that would fit the best, but, um, this actually gave me a little bit more room. So this is the one that I'm going to go with. Um, as you can see, um, it's nylon, it's water resistant. Um, it's got some pockets in the front that are Velcro. Um, it has a Velcro, uh, stick em area here where you can actually take uh, either a name or you could put an identifying mark of some sort and put the patch on here. For most of our bags, I have a, a fighting duck patch that I have on it so that I can identify our bags at a distance. Um, so you could do something similar to that. Um, it also has a handle at the top. So when we talk about putting them in backpacks, I usually put this in kind of the middle pocket of my child's backpack. And then if I need to get it out or if they need to get it out, they can just use this handle and pull it out really easily. Um, you don't need to dig around very much. Um, it's got double zippers, which is super helpful because then you can actually open the entire thing up as opposed to just opening the top and digging in. Um, and as I said, this is definitely like an organizer and there's a lot of stuff in here. So having the ability to lay it down and unzip it like this to then open it up um, is going to make life a lot easier for, for you and your child in that emergency situation. Okay, so let's talk about what's actually inside the pouch. So the first thing that's in the pouch is food. So um, I picked um, these power bar builder bars, um, mostly because they have 20 grams of protein in each bar. So if the kids needed to eat this, especially because they're little, I mean, these are, are pretty significant meal replacement snack um, options. So having a couple of these, they can eat through those. And by the time they've eaten through them, we will probably be to wherever they are. Um, as opposed to just putting in some crackers or um, like an applesauce, um, A, those can spill or crunch or make a huge mess inside the pouch if they get open. Um, but also there's not a lot of protein in there. So yeah, they'll eat it, but they're going to get hungry again really soon after. Um, so I would highly encourage you to find something that's high in protein. Um, make it a taste test. We did a taste test. I bought a bunch of different flavors and let the kids pick which flavor they liked. Um, and then we also put those in all the cars. So not only did they get to pick their flavor that was in their, their emergency bag, but they also got to pick kind of what was going to be in, in our cars. So they had stuff that they really liked. The next thing that's in the pouch is about lighting. So I have a couple of things around lighting. One is these little snap, uh, snap light glow lights. So these are the, the lights that you take out and you crack them and they'll illuminate. So these are great because they last for a really long time and they glow, which makes visibility really great. You're not going to necessarily be able to do a ton of reading or see really in front of you a whole lot, um, but it will give you a little bit of light and it will let people know where you are. So having one of these for your kids is going to be great, especially if there's a crowd of people and you want to be able to see them. Uh, the other thing is a headlamp. So you can also go with a flashlight, a standard uh, baton style flashlight. I chose a headlamp so that the kids can actually put it on and have both of their hands available to do whatever they needed to do. Um, whether it's play with friends or whether it's, you know, hold, you know, God forbid it's to hold like a medical dressing on or something like that. Um, I don't want to have to their hands to be already committed to something when they can really easily have a headlamp. They can see where they're going. They'll see where they're walking. Um, and this is the Coleman divide. So what's really cool about this headlamp is it actually separates apart. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, but the, the battery compartment is in one side and the lights in the other. And so with a normal headlamp, you would put the batteries in and they would kind of already be active in the lamp. And so they would degrade over time. They would rust out. Uh, they would corrode. And you would really want to probably store your batteries separately. In this case, the divide lets you pop this apart. And then the batteries actually are just sitting in a case. They're not actively touching the, the light. 
So you could put your, your batteries in here. As my kids have gotten older, I take the batteries out and store them separately. But if you have a younger child who maybe can't uh, use their fingers and get in and operate the battery compartments and stuff, using this to kind of keep the batteries active and make it so they don't have to worry about it would be a great option. So when it comes to signaling, um, having a whistle is really important. I have these kind of slimline yellow whistles for each of the kids. What is nice is, is that they don't have the kind of the bubble and the pee at the bottom, so they don't make a lot of noise and rattle when you're when you're walking, but they also take up less space in the bag and the pouch. Um, they're bright yellow, so they're gonna be easier to see if your child is holding onto them, if they're attached to the pouch, and so they're holding onto it with the pouch, they can see it, um, but they are super loud. So you, they, people will be able to hear this at distance, which if your child is separated or um, lost or something like that, this will definitely help bring people's attention to where they are. Since we don't really know what the weather is gonna be like, I'm including one of these sole emergency blankets. Uh, again, I have these in a lot of different kits. You may have seen them before in some of the other videos. These are really great because they're a little more durable than your standard Mylar blankets that you might get on Amazon that are super cheap. Uh, they're really flimsy and they can tear really easily. The, this is a little more durable. You could also use this almost like as a tent. You can use it as a blanket. You can use it in a variety of different ways. And for a child, this is, this is meant for an adult. So for a child, you may be able to get two kids under this or three kids under this as opposed to a single child with maybe a smaller blanket. Um, it's also great because it's orange and silver. So there's an orange side and a silver side. So the orange side is, again, gonna be something that's gonna be great for identifying your group or for identifying your child um, from a signaling perspective, aside from just the standard Mylar that, that you might see. So these are really great. They're great for rain, they're great for snow, they're great for cold, they're great for shade. Um, so this is just an all around great option. Um, so I have to make sure I have this in, in each of their kits. So from a first aid perspective, uh, there's only a couple things I included in the kit. Um, I don't intend for this to be a, a first aid kit. Wherever my child is likely has a larger first aid kit that is designed for some sort of a major injury. So I wanted to just have something that would basically make it so that they could take care of the smaller things themselves and not have to go bother the medical tent or uh, whoever's doing triage to take care of a cut or a scrape. So what I included were a couple of just standard size bandages. Um, you can include them. Some of them have um, like an antibacterial ointment already included in them. Some are just standard. These are just standard because that's what we had. Um, you know, if you want to get the antibacterial ones, that would be great because then your kids would need something like that. Um, to include separately. Um, it's just a bonus for the bandage. Um, and then the other thing I included were these Baby Gannick um, alcohol-free sanitizing wipes. So what's great about this is that they are alcohol-free. So if you have sensitive skin or um, you just don't like the sting of alcohol, um, this will do antibacterial and, and sanitize as well. Um, you can use it for a cut or a scrape, but you could also use it, for example, from a sanitation perspective. If uh, you need to go to the bathroom, there may not be actually like great uh, facilities to go to the bathroom. There might not be, um, you know, soap and water and things like that. So having something like this um, to wash your hands with is going to be at least better than nothing. So uh, I included these so they have a couple of options. Also, they come in these little individual packs, so you can get a big bag on Amazon, and you can put a few packages in uh, the kids' kits, you can put a few packs in your backpacks, you can put some in the car and kind of spread that investment out, as opposed to um, buying something specifically for just this kit. So, um, really, really love these. We live in the Northwest, and for us, rain is always a consideration for more days than it's not. So um, I included um, these kid ponchos in each of the bags. So um, the idea is that if it's really raining hard, they can put this on, it'll be, it's plastic. Um, it'll protect them and keep them dry from that. And then they can use the blanket, you know, maybe, maybe as like a bigger shelter. If they get a rip in the poncho, they can transition to the blanket. Um, but then this becomes kind of their primary waterproofing method and the blanket becomes more about, um, more about heat or um, shade or shelter. Um, so they kind of can use, use either, but I've told them, you know, ponchos first and then, then go to the blanket.
So a couple last things. So one is Sharpie, um, having some sort of a pen that they can write with, um, whether they need to write their name, whether they need to write down an address, whether they need to write down information, um, having something that they can write with is gonna be really important. Um, I like Sharpies because they can write on anything and they're not, it's not gonna rub off or, or wipe off um, like a, a ballpoint pen might or some of the, the types of inks that are in certain pens might wipe off or run off. Um, Sharpie's gonna stay um, and it'll write on anything with the felt tip as opposed to a ballpoint where um, depending on the type of paper you have or what you're trying to write on, that may be more difficult. So this is a really a must. Um, and then also some cash. Um, this is one of those things that um, you kind of go back and forth on, but if uh, they need to buy a bottle of water, if they're walking home uh, with friends and they need to get something, um, if they're with a friend, maybe they're at a friend's house, um, and something happens and they want to buy a snack for themselves or something, having some emergency money is always a good thing. Um, I think I put, I put $10 in their bag, um, in, in $1 bills. I didn't want to put any big bills and I don't want to put a ton of money in there. Um, I don't want them to be a target. I don't want them to have a ton of disposable cash with them at any given time. Um, cause they might lose this whole kit. But if they did need to have some sort of cash because they're not with us, I want to make sure that they have a uh, way to buy things um, if they needed to. So one of the things that I put in the kits that is, I would say, probably kind of controversial um, is I got each of my children an uh, emergency cell phone. Um, and I'm going to do a separate video on kind of why and what it, what's in it and how you do it and, and why I chose the ones that I did. Um, but... If, if a cell tower goes down, if the cell towers are working, then they can use this to call us. So if they're at a friend's house and it's not an emergency, but they're just scared or whatever, um, they can always call us. Um, there are a certain number of minutes on the phone every month that they can use if they want to. Um, but also I've, I've programmed in pictures of family. I've put in addresses with offline maps. So in case they, the cell towers did go down, they would actually have some information at their fingertips that they could use to either reunite with us, to help people reunite them with us. Um, or if cell towers are up, but they're still stranded at school, they could still send text messages. They can send um, calls and, and video chats or whatever is, is available, um, they can use. So um, I have one of these for each of them. And then in their emergency kits, I have a, a charger, so this will charge the phone uh, at least once, maybe one and a half times, depending, um, and a charger cable. So you don't wanna have a phone that goes dead in the middle of, of a disaster or right off the bat from a disaster. So making sure that if you're gonna have something like a, like a phone for your kid, um, that you have a charging device that will uh, get them through a few hours. Um, just like with the headlamp, you wanna make sure that you have a couple of extra batteries uh, that are available. So if they run out of power, they can, they can swap those out. Water is one of those tricky things when it comes to emergency kits for kids. And I'm going to tell you why you will think it's pretty straightforward. Um, but for us, our kids are required to have a water bottle, like a stainless steel water bottle with them in class all the time. Um, and they keep it full and they drink it throughout the day. So that is kind of their main source of water. Um, they also now at the school have backup water bottles. So I have not included a water bottle specifically in this kit because that's something that they have a couple of different methods to get while they are at, you know, while they're waiting for us. Um, but you can always put an extra water bottle in their backpack. Um, you can, especially if they're going to a friend's house or something, you can put an extra water bottle in their backpack. It's not gonna take up a lot of space. Um, it's probably not going to fit great in the pouch. So I wouldn't include it in the pouch. Also, if this pops or leaks or anything, you don't want this to ruin everything that's in the pouch. But it definitely wouldn't hurt to include it. But I haven't included it specifically in the pouch for those reasons. So that's going to wrap it up for uh, today's video going through the emergency kits that I have put together for my kids. Uh, please remember, this is what works for us. And this is just a suggestion. I wanted to, to give you guys a view into what I've put together and why I've put it together. Um, and then I want you to take that and I want you to make it yours. I want you to modify it for your kids, 
for um, their ages, for their needs, based on their school, based on how prepared their school and your family are. Um, you know, every, every kid is gonna be different. Every kid is gonna be different. And you wanna make sure that, that the kit that goes with your kid is customized for them. So uh, thanks again for joining us. If you have any questions, if you have things that you think should go in a kit um, that, that we didn't include here, please leave the suggestions in the comments down below. We're always looking for new and great ideas. Um, stay tuned because we're going to do a couple more videos around school um, as, as we get closer to the beginning of school. So make sure you hit the subscribe button uh, so you'll be notified. And thanks again for joining us and we will uh, see you next week. Thanks. Bye-bye.